is Nigeria in a period of stagflation? Stagflation, of course, is defined by rising inflation. You're seeing the figures that were just introduced or rather released by the Bureau of Statistics. 12.82% year on year in July from 126 in June. Also, unemployment, we got those figures on Friday, 27.1% Q2 2020 versus 23.1% in Q3 of 2018. And uh, slowing growth. Well, our guest joining me in the studio to discuss this is a senior economist at FBN Quest Merchant Bank, Chinwe Egwim. Chinwe, good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, starting with the uh, uh, inflation figures that just came out, we're going to be displaying that for our viewers. What's your take on those rising figures? Okay, well, it's in line with our, with our expectations. Headline went up by about 24 basis points. Uh, the food inflation rates, there was an uptick with about 30 basis points. And then core inflation declined marginally by three basis points. Now, for the core inflation, even though that was a decline, it's still at um, double-digit rate. Um, for the core, I believe the drivers were still medical um, services, pharmaceuticals, transport, or, yeah, transport by road, and then this time around we had transport by air. And that's not surprising given that um, you know, restrictions on air transportation were lifted recently. Um, with regards to imported food price inflation rates, there was also an uptick there as well, I think, by 10 basis points. Um, yeah, you know, given the, what's going on with the economy, the COVID-19 pandemic, one would have assumed that um, squeeze pockets would somewhat lead to a, a decline in headline inflation. But we also have to consider that there are supply side constraints. Um, so it's like uh, we're looking at it from two sides, the demand and the supply side. And supply, is, supply side constraints are actually now outweighing um, the demand side. So. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I guess the year is pretty much over. M many don't see inflation slowing down. I mean, are, are you in line with that where you think these figures which at least state will, will, will tread water uh, where we are double digits? Uh, yeah, of course, it remain at double digits. If there is a slowdown, it would solely be on the back of uh, positive base effects. So, yeah, we're in, we're in line with, this, with the same thoughts that you just expressed. All right, thank you. So, again, to, to my question, and I, I throw this at, at everyone, uh, is Nigeria in a period of stagflation, in your view? Well, given the textbook explanation of what stagflation is, my answer would be yes to you. Mm, thank you for that. All right, so to, to uh, uh, unemployment now, I want us to take a look at um, this. Uh, we've put this up for our viewers here, where we look at female unemployment compared to, uh, to, to male unemployment. Q2 2020 working age population per MBS, we're at 116.8 million, of which women make up 51.5. 6%, while men make up 48.4% of that figure. Unemployment for women is at 31.6%, while men's at 22.9%. Underemployment for women, that's at 31%, while for men is 26.3%. What, what, what do you make of that? Any cause for alarm? <laughs> Uh, the narrative has not changed. Um, it just really reflects the underutilization of the female economy. So um, with regards to any cause for alarm, this, this is what it's been for a while. This is how it's been. Um, but we should be thinking of ways to change this narrative for an economy that has each gender representing at least half of its population. It makes no sense for one segment to be um, ignored. Uh, I believe that we should be making deliberate steps towards equipping the female economy and getting them to be active with regards to um, the labor market. So. Okay, so that strategy, does that change with regards to um, youth unemployment? Because that, you know, unemployment, unemployment for youth is like 60-something, 60 61% or so. And even for men as well. Does the strategy change with what you just mentioned for women applying it to men and youth? Um, well, the strategies cannot be the same. If I hone into corporate Nigeria, there are specific things that are required for the women folk of the women economy. There are policies that are placed in offices or workplaces that can only apply to women, right? So you cannot apply the same method or approach for men or, or youth. So no, it has to be customized strategies for the three uh, segments that you mentioned. 
Okay, thank you for that. Now, I w- want to play a quick uh, a clip here. We're speaking to an uh, uh, investment manager over in South Africa. We're talking about the same thing, uh, uh, unemployment in South Africa, which, by the way, is at 30%. If you don't include people who are no longer looking for work, it's at 39% or so. I asked him about public sector job training programs, and he, he gave this answer. I want to get your take with, with regards to Nigeria in context. Let's take a listen to Chris Hart uh, when I asked him about job training programs to actually create jobs. Um, so you can train people until they're 40. All right. At some point, you've, you've got to actually get them into, an, into a job. To get a job, you've got to have a business that's, uh, you know, got a demand for those skills that have been. All right. So you can train people until they are 40. Um, doesn't make a difference if you don't place them. What, what, what do you make of that? Of course, I agree with him. Like, if you keep training and then there's no place to place the people you're training, there's a problem. But um, I, I beg to differ with regards to the training. I believe that we should encourage more training. However, maybe the approach should be adjusted. So we should look at the skills that we actually need and train people within these skills. Let's take, for instance, like uh, skills within the blue collar Uh, industry where you have plumbing, you have welding, you have painting, carpentry, and so on. These um, programs that equip people with skills should should focus on that because there's a huge gap there. You know, we're talking about unemployment rates rising steadily, but then there are jobs that we cannot find people to fill. And so I believe that if these um, training programs are well targeted towards skills that are required, then maybe we'll be able to see better placements. And also these training programs should also find a way to incorporate entrepreneurship skills so that the the approach is not really you're training for them to, to be employees, but you're also training for them to be entrepreneurs and own their own businesses and contribute to creating jobs for the economy as a whole. Thank, thank you for mentioning that. Do, do you think there's enough of an emphasis on that, the entrepreneurial part? Because it just seems there's just skills, 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 and that doesn't seem to be mentioned enough. Or do you think it is mentioned enough? Well, I think it's mentioned enough, but I'm also going to, on the flip side, um, with regards to SMEs and, you know, encouraging micro businesses, they also struggle with a lot of macroeconomic challenges. You know, the business terrain is a bit choppy. So in as much as we're trying to encourage them, we also have structural deficits that we need to take charge or take or address in order to help these businesses thrive and avoid businesses from dying within five years of existence. Thank you for that. Um, Okay, so that's, we're looking at, I guess, public sector with job training. Does it make any sense to look at the private sector with regards to them doing anything with regards to reducing unemployment, is that logical? Of course it's logical, but as, again, as I said, the macros, the business terrain has to be conducive for them. Imagine um, um, a business that has to spend, I don't know, 40% of its operational costs on power. If that could be reduced, it gives them more room to be able to increase their payroll. Um, at FBN Quest, we have a product called the Purchasing Managers Index. It's the first of its kind, released into Nigeria's financial markets. And with that index, we, there's a sub-index in there that focuses on employment. And those who are, who are surveyed on a monthly basis, the manufacturers surveyed on a monthly basis, they say that they've been unable to take on additional labor, significant additional labor, because of the choppy business terrain. Mm. It's, yeah. Okay, thank you. Anyway, speaking of the choppy business terrain, that terrain has, you know, worsened looking around the world, even here in Nigeria, due to uh, COVID-19. But th- there wasn't any highlights of the impact of COVID-19 on unemployment in Q2 uh, 2020, despite the reports uh, of layoffs on employees and so on and so forth. How would you estimate that impact? Well, true, there is no mention of that. But you also have to, or we have to recognize that there were separate reports created focusing on the impact of COVID-19 and employment was covered by the same um, agency. So... Um, with regards to the impact, we've also released a series of research reports um, over the past weeks. We had collaborated with Rich Technologies, who did the survey, and we saw that it's not just lay- layoffs, but there are also a lot of companies that are restructuring their salaries. So there's been a lot of downward revision of salaries. So perhaps, I don't know, based on our um, analysis and the sample size that we focused on, um, we've seen more of salary restructuring as opposed to um, layoffs. Okay, okay. Now, um, looking ahead, uh, recession has been projected for 2024, Nigeria. 
Would you rather wait for confirmation, i.e., Q2 and Q3 GDP, or are you of the opinion that it's already here? Well, I, I believe we're going to get that data um, anytime soon. Now, for Q2, we expect our projection is a contraction of as high as, let's say, 78% year on year for Q2. You know, this um, impact, the, this year, Nigeria faced a double whammy. It wasn't, just, it wasn't just dealing with the health or the pandemic. There was also the declining oil price. And so we're going to feel it or we're going to see it in the Q2 national accounts. Now, in Q3, we're likely to see another contraction, but at a slower rate. Okay. Okay. So then, okay. So there we are. So that is the recession then uh, at that point. Okay. So what about uh, recovery? Uh, some say 2021. How do you see that working out? Yes. Um, that's in line with our view. We see um, an economic recovery or GDP recovery as at end of 2021. I think we have it below 3%. It's good, but it's still below the population growth rate. So that's not so much to celebrate about. But of course, it's better than um, looking at a contraction. Are you uh, making any provisions for it possibly being extended into 2022? Is that something that you're um, e expecting that could possibly happen if, if things drag? Well, uh, our analysis and, and the models we've put together do not show anything that um, speaks towards uh, 2022. But, of course, these, these numbers are revised, you know, periodically. So for now, I would say no. OK, thank you. And I did want to get, get, take you back to uh, uh, unemployment. There's a tweet here from a, uh, a data center, Statisense, where they were talking about the international uh, standard for measuring unemployment. OK, yeah. So there it is right there. In most other countries, a person is said to be employed if he or she has spent at least one hour, just one hour working per week. If Nigeria uses the same context, Nigeria's unemployment rate would be 11.7%. I think that's from uh, the ILO, uh, International Labor Organization. Uh, Chinwe, is that, um, is that standard? I think that's from 1982. Is that outdated? Or what, do you, <laughs> what do you make of this? Well, I don't know if I would use the word outdated, but I think, you know, for different countries or different economies, different things work for them. Um, for an economy that is strict with regards to minimum wage payments, this could work for them, right? But if we're looking specifically at our uh, Nigeria's economy, I don't think this is um, a, a good measure or metric to use to measure. Okay. All right. We have been speaking with the senior economist at FBN Quest Merchant Bank, Chinwe Egwim. Thank you so much for taking us through your thoughts on inflation, taking us through your thoughts on the uh, most recent unemployment figures, and uh, giving us your outlook with regards to where the uh, economy is going. Thank you so much for your time.